Hi everyone. So this video is about Ocision's beautiful new Tangara model and specifically it's hopefully going to help people work out how do you get into them to DCC chip them. Um, this is uh, in front of you my second model. I haven't opened it yet but I'm about to and uh, I did open the first one I had and it took me a hell of a long time to work out how to get into it to try and put the DCC chip in and I know it's been a frustrating um, exercise for a lot of other modelers as well. So I'm hoping that uh, I can give you a few little tips that might make that easier and help you along the way. So here she is, the beautiful Tangara, fresh out of the box. Um, and notice the re-railer that Oxygen supplies. Uh, I noticed um, in a couple of videos I watched, people didn't really realise what that was for, but believe you me, it's an invaluable tool. Um, first thing in this process we want to want to make sure we do is clip the pantograph down. You don't want that sticking up and in the way. And the second thing we want to do is to see this screwdriver, get rid of it. When I did my other one, I couldn't work out how to get it open and I was prizing away at the side of it with this screwdriver. No good. Put them away. If you've got that, get rid of it. I'll, show, I'll try and show you why. Here's the first motor, uh, locomotive I did. And I'm going to just try and zoom in a little bit at the base of these doors here. And can you see all that pitting? See here, I don't know if I can point to it with my finger. That's what the screwdriver will do. Nasty, nasty, get rid of the screwdriver, put it away. You don't wanna be doing that to your brand new model. I didn't know how to go about it. I tried and tried and that was the end result. You don't want that happening. So get rid of that, put it away. This new one that we've got sitting here, we wanted to avoid that happening. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I went to visit an Australian modeler today and I spoke to Aaron and I said to him, Aaron, how do you get into these damn things? A lot of people are asking online about it. And he was kind enough to show me and Oxygen are going to put a video out about this at some stage. So when they do, please, by all means, ignore this one and follow theirs because they're the experts. But what Aaron said you really need is one of these. This is a little flat chisel blade your craft knife, put the screwdriver away, get this, get yourself one of these chisel blades. Now this is an old one that I've had sitting around here, but believe you me, it does the job a hell of a lot better. Uh, and by following this technique, which was demonstrated to me by Aaron today at uh, Australian Modeler, I think you'll find you'll have a lot less heartache and grief in using one of these to get into your model and to do it without uh, the potential of damaging it. So with that said, what I think the best thing to do is I'll try and show you as best as Aaron showed me. So put it on a bit of nice flat uh, foam to protect the body. And I guess what we want to realize is that there are four connection points on either side of the locomotive um, chassis to the body and they are located here then there's one here a third one here and a fourth one here and the two that you want to start with are the two at either end the this end and this end that's where we're going to begin they're a little bit more flexible is what I've been told this one and this one, they're a little bit stiffer. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start at this end. I'm gonna try and zoom in a little bit. But, uh, you know, bear with me, I'm not a videographer. It might be a bit clumsy and clunky, but I'm gonna do my best to show you what Aaron showed me how to do, because when I first did the other one, I was here and I was at it for a couple of hours and it was frustrating, it was hard. I didn't know what I was doing and uh, Aaron had his open in I mean it's flat over there today so what you want to do is we want to go between the grey where the grey and the silver is 
and that's a, a bit of a seam point. So we're just going to put that chisel, chisel blade in there, try and get a little bit of purchase very gently on it, pop it in, and what we're going to try and do is prise up this lug that's at this end. So I'm just going to try and do that now, bear with me. Apologise if my big hands are in the road. Just pressing it in, you can hear it go click. I'm just going to ease that up ever so gently. And you can see we've achieved a little bit of separation. Now what I'm going to do, Aaron didn't do this today, but I'm going to do it because I just find it helps. So I've got a little bit of thin plastic and I'm just going to poke that in there to help keep that gap open. Just slot that in there and you can see, <coughs> pardon me, that we've now got a tiny little gap. That being done, we're going to move to the driver's end. And we're going to repeat the process and do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to take this little thin chisel blade directly under the grey part of the driver's cab there. Ease it in and just gently prise it up. You can hear it clicked off. Again, I'm going to pop this little bit of plastic in under here next to the driver's door just to help keep it open. Fairly easy so far. The next part I'm going to attack is this area here and the area at the other end, just here. Now these are the little bit more challenging ones and slightly different technique with your blade. So what we're going to do is this time I'm going to put it into that gap, but I'm going to push it towards the base of the model, the blade. And what I'm going to do is just apply a little force, a little force very slowly and gently and carefully to that area there. Now that hasn't given all that much, so I'm going to come back up to this end and try it at this end. Again, I'm going into the area just next to the doors. I'm pushing down towards the base of the model and gently prising up. And I'm hoping that what we'll find is that eventually there'll be a little bit of give. What I may do is insert a little bit of the plastic to help. One thing to be very, very aware of is that the area directly under the windows, there we go, we've got it now. See, it's popped up there. The, this area here, directly beneath the windows, tiny, thin, thin, thin little piece of plastic. Don't be going in there with anything or you'll easily break it. So I'll come to the other end now and I'll do the same, and it's a bit of a, I suppose, fulcrum action was the way Aaron described it. I'll just very, very carefully, and I'm hoping that this will eventually sort of give a little bit and pop up. It's quite tight. It doesn't want to move. There it goes. And that's one side done. That's what we want to see. And what we've been, what we've avoided is that there's no pitting underneath any areas here that's come from a screwdriver like this fellow here and causing this sort of damage that um, we don't want to see. We don't want to be doing that, put the screwdriver away get yourself this little flat blade chisel blade that's the fella you want what we've got to do here now is turn the model over and we want to do exactly the same thing on the other side of it when you go to pick it up just be careful that you don't press those clips back together and that's why i think putting these little slips of plastic in it helps now just gently turn it over and you're going to repeat the process on the other side. 
So I've just flipped the model over to the other side. Now do that carefully because what you, when you pick it up, you don't want to inadvertently um, clip the side you've just done clipped back together. Again, I'm coming to the back with my blade. I'm just going to put it between the gray and the um, silver and that um, pops out quite nicely at the end. I'm just going to slot my little piece of plastic in there to help keep it open. Then I'm going to, whoops, sorry, turn my attention to the driver's cab end uh, and under the grey section here I'll do the same thing. Sorry about the jerky movement. Pop my, pop my uh, chisel blade in there just ever so gently and up it's starting to pop so I'm going to try and put one of my little plastic wedges in just to help keep that gap open and then I'll take my blade out and I'll start to move my attention towards the uh, sections in between the windows and the yellow doors. So like before, this time it's slightly different. I'm coming in, pushing down towards the base and then using a sort of fulcrum action to try and ease it up. And there it went, pop, it's come loose. I'll move my attention down to this end and hopefully this will have my model open. Just go slowly and steadily. We've waited a long time for these, so the last thing we want to do is wreck them. And there we go. So now we should, I'll just zoom out a little bit should in theory all things being equal just be able to lift the body off ever so carefully and there it goes that my friends was a hell of a lot quicker than the two and a half hours of frustration that it took me to open it the first time so a couple of things now that we want to look at I'm just going to zoom in to where the decoder is. Now, I've already opened this, as I mentioned. But one thing I didn't realise when I opened it the first time is that you can see here, and possibly not so well, but here at the end of my screwdriver blade, um, these are the DCC light fitting ports. And when you get your model, the plugs are actually plugged in here and here. So we need to move these two plugs for DCC. I've already put the 21 pin decoder in, it's fine. I'm gonna leave it be, but I do need to move these two lighting plugs. And I'm hoping that um, by doing that, that might resolve some of the strange lighting behavior I've been seeing because I didn't realize that that had to be done when I first opened it. <clears throat> the other thing just to be aware of is that in this particular instance let's have a look with we'll zoom in we've got um, our driver here at this end we've got no guard sitting facing backwards at this end that's fine i'm, I'm not particularly worried i noticed in the um, dummy end there was no driver figure so i actually added one i'll have a little video or you know add to this video to show you the other thing too, just to be aware of when you do open these, these little white plastic um, parts here and here that sort of support the seats and cover them where the motor is, they're prone to popping out at the bases here. And if you're not careful, if you don't check that they're in the right positions, when you go to uh, put your model back together, they will um, prevent it from closing up properly. So here we are with the um, body off the dummy uh, end of the Tangara. And a couple of things I wanted to just show you in this end. 
So if I zoom in a little bit to the area where the uh, function only decoder is, one of the important things I think to do is when you've got the body off, you'll find that the um, when it comes in the box, the lighting plugs will be here. There's one here and one just over here. Plug, they're plugged into the DC positions when you first get it. What you need to do is remove them and move them across here and here. They're the DCC positions. I've been getting some strange lighting results and I'm wondering if it's because I didn't realize that I had to move it from here to here and from here to here. The other thing I noticed in mine was that uh, at the uh, other end, it came with a, a driver f uh, a figure or a guard figure, I guess, seated, seated here and he's facing backwards. So if the train's running this direction, he's on the right side. But if you're running uh, the train with the, you want the driver driving, he was missing. So I actually, I was lucky I had a packet of these. I don't know if you can make them out, but they're Ossetian um, driver figures. They cost, what, nine ninety five at the time, a couple of years ago. What I had to do was just nip off the one of the, the other arm of his armchair and I've glued him in. So that way we've got our guard figure and we've got or our observer and we've got our driver so no matter which direction we're facing we're right i actually broke that little lug off so you need to be really careful i've super glued it back on i don't know how well it'll hold but uh, that'll show you that uh, you know th there's one lug um, there's the second second lug and we come along a little bit and let me just adjust the camera. That's the third lug and the final lug up here. Yes, yeah, so at this point in proceedings, where we're up to is I've just installed the uh, 21 pin lock pilot decoder that uh, I got for the uh, Tangara, the, uh, motor, the, the motor end. And what I've done is I have moved the lighting plugs from their original DC position here and here directly across to their DCC positions here and here. Now the next step here is in reinstating the uh, cab. Now um, just check this little plastic fellow and this little plastic fellow here that they haven't moved out of position. And what I think you will want to hang on to for this exercise is your little scalpel blade, your little chisel blade, I should say, because it can help you when it comes to reinstating the cab roof. So what I'm going to just carefully do is to pop that back on and uh, just try and sit it on very carefully and lower it as evenly as possible and I want to try and use fairly uh, gentle pressure on either side I guess and distribute the force I'm using as evenly as possible but it's a very very tight model and in particular what you'll notice when you come to refit is that uh, some of these little sections, particularly under the doors where there's little bits of um, plastic moulding sticking out, they might need to be gently eased back into place. Uh, one thing I will mention, my model is the uh, Mortdale version with the yellow front. And when I turn it upside down, just to show you here, there's no skirt. Aaron at Oscision said to me today that some people who have different variants of the Tangara, they may find that they've got a little piece of skirt running under the coupling here. So when you come to remove your bodies, you may just need to be mindful of that area. Apparently it will lift, still lift off over that, but you'll just have to be cautious because that can be broken. 
So what I'm just going to gently try and do now is to ease all of those little clips back into place. And um, what I found when I was doing the other one is that sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement to get back into their right locations. So you can, I don't know if you can make out, but you can sort of see here that this central area wants to still stick out. And I've just lost my little blade, here he is. So what I'm gonna try and do, we seem to be going all right at this front, so I'll just sort of gently squeeze him, but here we're trying to stick out a little bit. So I'm gonna put that flat little chisel blade back in and just try and coax those areas back in so the clips can re-engage. And uh, while I keep a little teeny bit of pressure there, I'll try the same thing. And I'm trying to be as even as I can um, between the two sides as well. But uh, that's just something that it does take a little bit of time. And you may just need to uh, be patient. And you hear it just popped in there on that side. We'll see here, it, it looks like it needs a little bit of help here with the doors to get back under. So I'm just going to go in here where I was before, try and reinsert my blade and see if I can encourage this to, whoop, no, it wants to pop up there a little. So we just took it, you, you may find that when it comes to reinstating things, that it takes a little bit of patience to do it, but uh, you know, as in opening it, slow and steady wins the race. And use your little blade to help you. In much the same positions as you used them to start with, I must say. Little by little, what you'll find is you'll get it to re-engage. There are some areas where there are little, little tab, little parts sticking out, like under the driver's door here, for example. That little flap at the bottom, it needs to be able to go underneath there. So your blade can help you to there you go, just pop things back into where they need to be. So I'll carry on doing this and uh, hopefully in a minute I'll have everything back in ship shape and back together. I guess the final piece to this puzzle is to uh, work out what's got to be done with the lighting because when, before I uh, swapped over the plug, lighting plugs from D, uh, DC to DCC. As they were at the factory position, what would happen if I pressed the headlight button on my NCE uh, Pro Cap, I'd get the headlight and the dish lights coming on. Uh, if I pressed function button number one, I'd get the white marker lights coming on at both ends of the uh, locomotive at both ends of the Tangara. And if I pressed function button two, I'd get uh, the uh, red markers and the guards marker, uh, guards lights coming on. Since I've swapped over the plugs to DCC, here's what I've noticed happening. If I get, uh, if I press the headlight button, it comes on and that's directional. So at the moment I've got forward selected. If I select reverse, it goes off. Select back to forward. If I select function one, I get my white marker lights come on. Turning function one off turns them off. And if I press function two, I get my red marker lights come on, turn them off. Pressing function two again. Pressing, pressing function five, 
lights up my ditch lights. Pressing it again turns them off and pressing six turns on my guard lights and they come on on both sides of the uh, locomotive and pressing six turns them off. And that's fine, that's all understandable. It's when you get to the opposite end of the locomotive that things are not quite the same. So I've come down to the opposite end of the Tangara and uh, this is the dummy locomotive. So I'm going to select reverse as the direction. In, in other words, the dummy locomotive is going to be travelling forward. And if I uh, press the headlight button, on it comes. If I press function number one, I get my white marker lights just as I do at the other end. But the thing is, they come on at the other end as well. If I press function one again, they turn off. Press function two, I've got my red marker lights come on. Press it again, they go off. But this time, when I press function five, which I just did now, nothing happens. And if I press function six, which was turning the gas lights on and off previously, at the other end, nothing happens. So I'm not sure whether that's a feature of the decoder itself. Remembering that this is a function only decoder at this end, a lock pilot. I'm not sure whether it needs to have those uh, ditch lights and guards lights mapped to say function three and function four. Maybe it's only a four function decoder, I'm not really too sure. And that's something that I'll have to work out. And um, I think uh, once I get that worked out, then we might be in business. I hope this video has helped some of you. Um, certainly it's mostly been about how to crack open and get into the uh, into the things and thank you very much to Aaron from Ossision uh, for sharing his uh, skills and expertise especially around the tip using the little chisel blade that certainly made it a whole lot easier happy railroading guys bye for now oh and uh, check out the Mount Annan line on Facebook that's uh, where we're coming to you from uh, have a great night, everyone. Bye for now.